So guys, in this video, I want to go through the essential algebra that you need to know for trigonometric identities, because let's be real here. It's usually not the trigonometric identities where students make their mistakes. It's with the algebra. And some of this stuff is pretty basic, but once we introduce trigonometric functions or identities, students just kind of totally forgot what they've learned. So in this video, I want to do a quick review as well as, you know, letting you know what you need to focus on with those, those good algebra skills. So therefore you can be successful. So. The first thing you absolutely have to remember or know is the division property. Now, remember the division property is basically anything divided by itself. All right. So uh, now this happens a lot of times. Again, if we had like the sine of theta divided by the sine of theta, ladies and gentlemen, that is just going to be equal to one. Anything divided by itself is just equal to one. And remember like back in the day, if we had like five divided by five, right, that's one. If we had like an X plus five divided by an X plus five, like that was also equal to one. So just remember anything divided by itself is going to equal to one. Now, if you have more than one expression though, make sure those terms are going to be separated by multiplication, not addition or subtraction, which brings me to the next one is sometimes we'll have expressions that are going to look something like this. So we'll have like a sine of theta, you know, plus one all over a sine of theta and students immediately say, oh, signs in the numerator and the denominator, it divides out. Well, no, ladies and gentlemen, this is not equal to a one. What we need to understand is the sine of theta is dividing into the sine of theta as well as dividing into the one. Um, so therefore the final answer in this case, in this case is just going to be a one plus a one over a sine of theta. Now, and again, hopefully you recognize with your trigonometric identities, one over sine of theta can also be rewritten as a one plus a cosecant of theta. All right. Now, sometimes again, like I like to always use numbers so you guys can kind of see what exactly I'm doing or why I'm doing it. And so again, let's pretend like sine of theta is five, right? If I had a five plus one all over a five, again, think about this, right? What is five plus one divided by five? Well, that's going to be a six over five, right? It's not equal to one, right? The fives don't divide out. Do simplify your numerator and denominator and you see that's going to be, oh, that's a six fifths. Okay. So sometimes if you get confused with the algebra and you're not really sure, then go back to what you have learned. Um, then go back to what you've learned with the algebra and just go ahead and use like numbers or variables to be able to make sense of things. Um, all right, so let's go and take a look at another example, which happens all the time. And this is going to be how we write the sine squared of theta, which is kind of weird. I get it. I know. Um, but again, like it's a very important guys sign of sign of something is, or sign is going to be something, uh, is a function. Okay. Just like we can take a variable like squared or anything like that. So what we need to understand is like, how can we rewrite this? Like, what does this actually look like? Well, we need to understand that the sine squared of theta is actually what that means is a sine of theta quantity squared divided by a sine of theta. So again, going back to like our basics of numbers, like what do we recognize? Like, why don't forget about five? Why don't we just do like an X squared divided by X? Well, what do we do there? Now you might remember your rules of exponents, blah, 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 blah. But in reality, what I want you to think about is like, remember X squared is just X times X, right? Divided by an X. So again, you can just say like, forget about the rules of exponents. You can see the X's are going to divide out. Let's do that a little bit better. And therefore that's just going to leave me now with a X, right? Or an X over one. So in this case, that's exactly what's happening. We have the exact same thing that's going on. This is just going to be equal to a sine of theta times a sine of theta divided by a sine of theta. Now, again, remember what I said, guys, the division property can be applied same thing in the numerator and the denominator when things are separated by multiplication which you can see my two sines of theta are. So therefore now we're going to have a final answer here of a sine of theta. So now it's going to bring us to the last one, which is kind of confusing. And again, you depending on where you're learning trick identities, you might not get this one, um, or at least till later in the chapter, but I think it's really important for us to recognize this one and at least to understand it because this one gets into the heart of like understanding functions. Okay. So a lot of students will see a problem like this and say, Oh, the signs are going to divide out the thetas are going to divide out. Right. And we're just going to be left with two. No, 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 no. Okay. And the same thing that I want you to understand, like if I had, um, same thing, if I had like the square root, let me just kind of give you another function. Okay. If I had like the square root of a two X divided by the square root of X, right. You wouldn't say that the square roots of X is just divide out and that's equal to a two right? No, that it doesn't work like that, right? You can't just undo the square root of, um, you just can't undo the square root from the two, right? You just can't eliminate that way. And in the same way, in this case, you can't undo with this sign. Now, technically in this problem, it gets even a little confusing because the sign is not the same thing as a square root function. All right. So we don't have the rules of exponents to be able to apply for our trigonometric functions. 
what we'd actually need to be able to do in this case would actually be able to use trigonometric identities to recognize that the sine of two theta is actually equal to a two sine of theta, cosine of theta, all over a sine of theta, all right? So the main thing I just want you to do is don't just divide things out. This is inside the function. The two theta is inside of the, your trigonometric function, which is the same thing of sine of theta, which is inside this one. Okay. So I just don't want you to, you got to understand, you have to respect that they are functions and just don't divide things out. You have to be able to use your identities, which in this case, you can see everything is separated by multiplication. So therefore now my final answer in this case is going to be a two cosine of theta. Okay. So you guys can see that the division property is extremely important. It's so important that I had four different examples for it. Now the next one is a little bit easier and a little bit simpler, and that is going to be combining your functions. Okay, so when we're combining functions, I mean, guys, let's just get to the basics. I mean, right? And if I had like x plus x, right, that's equal to a 2x. If I had the square root of x plus the square root of x, that's equal to a 2 square root of x, right? So remember, combining only works when we have like terms, okay? So we have to have the functions to be exactly the same. So in that, in that moment then, if I have, right, a cosine of theta, which is a function just like x or square root of x, plus a cosine of theta, then again, don't make this a cosine squared, right? Don't do cos, you know, sine squared or cosine squared of theta. No, that's multiplication, right? But you have, how many cosine thetas do you have? You have two cosines of theta. So there you go, voila. Now, what about if they're not the same? What about if you had like a secant of theta plus a cosecant of theta? Well, you can't combine them. That's like having x plus y, cannot do it. But however, with trigonometric identities, the why sometimes it gets a little bit uh, frustrating for a lot of students is because we can manipulate these, right? I can rewrite a secant, ladies and gentlemen, as a one over a cosine of theta, and I can rewrite a cosecant as a one over a sine of theta. Then that brings us back to, again to another algebra seal. Well, what do we do when we have fractions without the same denominator, right? You can't combine functions that are not the same, but you can combine fractions that don't have different, that have different denominators, Right? Think about that. If I had like one over X plus one over Y, what would you do? Well, you'd identify the least common denominator, which is going to be a product of the denominators in this case would be an X, Y. And then what you do is you multiply, right? By X over X and by Y over Y to obtain a common denominator, which in this case, you'd finally get a Y plus X over an X, Y. Okay. Just a side, nice little side example for you. But in this case, guys, that's exactly the exact same thing we're going to do. In this case, we're going to multiply by sine of theta on the left-hand side and a cosine of theta on the right-hand side. So therefore, now we're gonna obtain our common denominators. Now, again, I can't add a sine of theta plus the cosine of theta in my numerator, but at least what I can do now is rewrite them as like one single fraction or at least as one single um, term. So that'd be a sine of theta plus a cosine of theta all over a sine of theta cosine of theta. So at least now you can see it's represented as a single term. I did technically go ahead and combine them. And that's going to be a helpful skill that we're going to need to know. But another helpful skill that's going to be even more probably important that's going to come up kind of like more often is going to be multiplying. And now multiplying is very simple, guys, just like we did multiplying with everything else, like, you know, x times x is x squared, right? Um, you know, and then also remember FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. If you can just kind of remember like the distributive property as well as what happens when you take a function and you multiply them and, you know, by, by themselves, um, then you're basically going to be set up here. But again, like it gets confusing with um, trigonometric functions. So when I'm multiplying, if I have the tangent of theta, right, times the tangent of theta, okay? Now, again, just remember like that is the tangent of theta squared. However, to kind of not have this two on the outside to kind of represent this, what we like to do is just rewrite this as a tangent squared of theta, okay? Now, we can also do this with uh, distributive property. Like, don't forget the distributive property. Again, sometimes students will, you know, make mistakes with this. If I had like the sine of theta times the cotangent of theta plus the, what's cosecant of theta. Okay, so just remember, right? By applying the distributive property, sine needs to be multiplied by here and sine needs to be multiplied over there. Now you might say, but Mr. McLuhan, like how am I going to multiply? Like I get it, tangent times tangent, tangent squared. Well, what is sine of theta times cotangent of theta, right? What's sine of theta times cosecant of theta? Like what do I do there? Well, again, this is where trigonometric identities kind of gets a little tricky with us. Because if we can now use our trigonometric identities, we can actually manipulate these. So I can't really, you're right, I can't do them, uh, I can't simplify them as they're written, but I can write them like this. 
So sine of theta, cotangent of theta, plus a sine of theta, cosecant of theta, right? Now, if I want to simplify this further, what I'm going to want to do is actually rewrite the cotangent theta and the cosecant of theta, theta using my quotient as well as my reciprocal identities. Then I can apply the division property, which I talked to you about at the beginning of this video. So therefore, I'd have a sine of theta. And then over here would just be a, um, let's see, that's going to be a cosine of theta all over a sine of theta. And then this would be a sine of theta um, times a 1 over a sine of theta. All right. And then again, notice how these are now separated by multiplication, guys. So those are going to divide out. Those are going to divide out. And I'm going to be left with a cosine of theta plus 1. Now, so I got one more multiplying problem that I want to show you. And this one comes in. This one tricks up students. It doesn't matter what the functions are or what happens in this case. It's just one that students, you know, constantly make mistakes on. And so I had to feel like I had to um, provide a video on this. So what about if I had 1 minus cosecant um, of theta squared? All right. Now, again, the biggest mistake that students will make, and please do not do this, is they will distribute the squared. So that'd be a 1 squared minus a cosecant of theta squared. Don't do that, please. Please don't do that. Remember, guys, whenever something's squared, right? If I had tangent squared, what does that mean? That means tangent times tangent. If I have a 1 minus a cosecant of theta squared, what that means is 1 minus a cosecant of theta times a 1 minus a cosecant of theta, right? So now we have to be able to apply our FOIL or our distributive property. We need to multiply everything times everything, okay? And just kind of work this out in a systematic approach, guys. You know, take your time. The, the more practice you do, the better you can be able to do this work in your head, right? But if you're just working out, if you're still like things are kind of get confusing for you and you, you know, you just like want to make sure you're doing, um, doing things right, then just write it out like step by step, right? You know, you, you FOIL, you have the, um, the outer, right? You have the inner and then you have the last, right? And you can follow FOIL if you want to. I don't know. So um, in this case, we have a one uh, minus a cosecant of theta. Um, let's see, minus a cosecant of theta, and therefore then that's going to be plus a cosecant squared of theta. Now, these are my like terms. I can combine those. So that's a 1 minus a 2 cosecant of theta plus a cosecant squared of theta. Now, technically, we just multiply that out. Um, if you're really good or you recognize your Pythagorean identities, then we could further simplify this out. But again, I don't want to over scare some of you that are like, what are you talking about? What am I doing here? Uh, you'll get to it. You'll get to it in trigonometric identities. Trust me. But um, so again, one plus cosecant of squared of theta, that can actually be simplified to cotangent squared of theta minus a two cosecant of theta. Again, not saying you have to do it. It all depends on what the problem is, right? If you're verifying, simplifying, you know, solving an equation like there, a lot of times students have trouble with trigonometric identities because the rules can, um, sometimes there's so many different ways to do it. So that's why having the algebra at, in your back pocket helps you being able to manipulate the equations to be able to achieve what it is you want to achieve. And one of the most confusing ways to manipulate an equation that students often don't think about, which I had to save to the end, is rationalizing. Okay, so why would we rationalize an equation? Well, most students remember rationalizing like square roots, right? We don't want to divide by a radical, so we rationalize the radical. Or also sometimes we would rationalize um, with uh, complex numbers, right? We didn't want to divide by i, so we rationalize um, the denominator. Well, in this example, we're not going to really use that um, rationaling technique or that understanding of like we don't want to divide by those numbers. We're going to use rationalizing to um, to what am I trying to say? We're going to use rationalizing to manipulate our equation, okay? And so again, that's all going to depend on what the directions are for our certain problems. It's just important for you to recognize like how to rationalize and what is that going to do. So when we want to rationalize, typically with trig, what we're trying to do is either get rid of our denominator, like to make it one, or to rewrite it as a um, Pythagorean identity that we can then further condense. Now, in this case, if we have something in our denominator and I wanted to like rationalize, let's say I wanted to get rid of what was in my denominator, then what I could do, or if I didn't want to have a denominator, I wanted to get rid of this cosine, I could simply just multiply by the reciprocal, right? Which would be a secant of theta. Okay. Now, again, just make sure whenever you do that, put parentheses around whatever is in your um, numerator in that case. Okay. And so again, now I need to make sure I multiply here by everything inside there. And by doing that now, now what um, that's going to give me is going to be a secant of theta, secant of theta times cosine of theta is going to be plus one. And then secant of theta over cosine of theta is going to be one. So therefore, that is just going to be my 
manipulated equation. It's worth the exact same thing, right? All I did was though, by multiplying by secant of theta on the top and bottom, which produced a equivalent fraction, simplifies though to a secant of theta plus one, which again, depending on what I was looking for, I might have like needed, or that's just a way that I can manipulate the equation um, for trigonometric identities. Now, what about if I wanted to do it another way? And again, you could have done this on top. It's just a different way of rationalizing the denominator. But what if I had the problem that looks like this? What if I had a cosine of theta plus one? And what if I wanted to manipulate or get rid of, um, sometimes we rationalize the numerator. So you could do this up top as well in that problem. But what about if I wanted to like manipulate the cosine of theta plus one or you know somehow get rid of that? Well, in this case, I want to multiply by secant because notice when you multiply by secant, you didn't really get rid of anything, right? It just became secant of theta plus one. So if I actually want to condense this or get rid of it, what I'm actually going to want to do is multiply by the conjugate, which is going to be a cosine of theta minus one. Again, you're going to have to do that on the top as well as on the bottom. Okay. And what happens when you do that? Well, again, you have to apply your FOIL, right? That's what we did up here. But hopefully you recognize here that's a difference of two squares. And when you have a difference of two squares, um, that is going to produce a Pythagorean relationship. Or hopefully with that, that's going to be able to simplify to a squared you know, a minus b times a plus b is going to be an a squared minus a b squared, which a lot of times is going to produce a Pythagorean relationship, which I was saying. So let's go ahead and rewrite my numerator. I'm not going to distribute that through. Um, you could. Actually, you know what? <sighs> cosine of theta. Yeah, let's actually, let's multiply that through. So this would be a cosine squared of theta. Oh, yeah, no, I'll just leave that out there. Never mind. Um, so that's going to be a cosine of theta times a cosine of theta minus one, which again, you could distribute. I guess maybe I'll do that at the end. I don't know. And then over here, I'm going to have a cosine squared of theta minus one. Okay. That, if you, um, if you guys recognize here from your Pythagorean relationship, is actually going to be equal to a sine squared. So now, actually, uh, let's go ahead and distribute that. So yeah, I'll do a cosine squared of theta minus a cosine of theta divided by a sine squared of theta. So ladies and gentlemen, if you've got rationalizing, if you've got multiplying, if you've got combining, and you've got division property down pat, then you are all ready to be successful for trigonometric identities. If you're looking for more videos on simplifying, verifying, solving with trigonometric identities, then go and check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.